This is Conversations on Discipleship with Father Adam Streitenberger from St. Gabriel Catholic Radio and Diocese of Columbus Media. Welcome to Conversations on Discipleship. I'm your host, Father Adam Streitenberger. With me today is Anne Gradeville. She is one of our focus missionaries at Ohio State University. Welcome, Anne. Thanks, Father. Uh, so great to have you. Uh, let's start with a prayer in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Lord God, we ask that you um, uh, pour out your Holy Spirit upon um, the community and all of the students at Ohio State University, that their hearts might be open to your love and your mercy especially um, to the work of our focus and SPO missionaries there and all of the work of the Newman Center. Uh, we ask that you bless all of their work through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. So, Anne, this is your first year at Ohio State. It is, yes. Is that right? Yeah. As a focus missionary. Did you serve anywhere else before? I did not. I just graduated college in May from a co small college in Iowa called the University of Northern Iowa. So this is my first year. Well, what do yeah. you think of Ohio State? <laughs> it's really big. <laughs> 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 I went to a school of 10,000 students, so 65,000 has been an adjustment, but I love it. I love yeah. it so much. There's so much potential. So Beautiful. Um, you know, as this is our kind of first time together, we'd like to hear your story kind of mm -hmm how you came to know the Lord. Yeah. Um, so maybe you could yeah, I'd share love that to. with us. So I grew up in a really good Catholic family, my parents. Um, and then I had one sibling. His name was Jack, an older brother. Um, and just like a really good, good family. We went to Mass. We did all the right things. I think like the personal side of faith was missing a little bit. Um, but I was always, I knew it was important. And I always like wanted to go to Mass. Um, and yeah, throughout middle school and high school, I was very involved in things, but probably for a little bit of the wrong reason looking back. Um, I really enjoyed going to all the conferences and leading things and being in charge of youth group, but it was often very success oriented and for the, you know, the prize and the name. Um, and along that time, I also was playing a sport pretty competitively. And so uh, yeah, that was fueling that desire to have an identity outside of faith life alone in the relationship with the Lord. Um, and so went to college, and I actually played a sport in college, too. I played golf. And so I knew going to college I wanted to be involved in the Newman Center and be active there. Um, but I was also living this very separate life of athletics. So I got involved at the Newman Center. I was in a Bible study my freshman year, um, but then super immersed in an athletic culture. And yeah, coming to know the Lord, but also living this, like, double standard, double life. Um, my sophomore year, I got involved in the, leading a Bible study and was still in Bible study, loved it. Um, but, again, it was falling into the same trap of doing it for the purpose of being seen, being known. And, yeah, then um, a, big, a big change was my junior year, we got focused missionaries at my college. We didn't have them the first two years, um, and we didn't have a lot of people walking with us discipling us in any way so focus came and it was yeah just radically transformed our campus and definitely transformed my life um, I became really really good friends with the two missionaries and one of my missionaries actually played a sport in college so that was a huge gift to me because I didn't realize that I could combine my sport and faith in college I thought they had to be two separate lives I lived um, and so one of the first weeks of school she was like Anne I'd love to start an athlete Bible study with you. <laughs> I'm like, great, Leanne, we can do it, but no one's going to come. <laughs> so um, we asked a couple girls, and by the grace of God, they all said yes. And I'm like, great. So we started that group, and that was a time where I realized I don't have to live these two separate areas. I can combine these two areas in my life um, and bring the transformation I've had in the Lord into my team and into my athletic culture. Um, and then I went to a focus conference the winter of my junior year of college, and it was all about prayer and relationship with the Lord um, and how that has to come first before mission and before our identity. And basically just had a radical realization that I wasn't praying very consistently, and I was doing all these great mission things for the wrong reasons. 
So, yeah, asked um, the other female missionary, Whitney, who I became really dear friends with, to walk with me in that process of learning how to pray. Um, And so, yeah, I was growing in intimacy with the Lord when COVID occurred. And around that same time, I tore my labrum in my shoulder, which was, yeah, basically going to pull me out of my identity of, like, an athlete forever. Um, And so... It was like this perfect storm of events. I had gone to this conference, knew that the Lord needed to be more of the center of my life in prayer, and then tore my labrum and COVID all at the same time. Um, And so I went home and like was surrounded by my family, who I said was great and yeah, was growing in intimacy with the Lord and realizing that he really had never been the center of my life and was desiring that more and more and had like the space to do it because all of those identity and success things I had lived for were gone. I no longer could, you know, be a friend to everyone I saw ever because I didn't see people, and I couldn't be the president of all these clubs and be in charge of all these things. Um, And so really the only identity I had left was a daughter. And so really just, like, learned to embrace that identity, and that was, like, the major turning point was that perfect storm Um, I wouldn't necessarily say that it was, like, this huge moment um, because I had a relationship growing along the way, but it was definitely a a turning point on the road for me. Um, So then I, yeah, that was was the moment that I was like, okay, I'm going to make him the center of my life. I'm going to commit to praying every day. Um, And that, yeah, that led to the, the, the moment of desiring to do mission in a more complete way, which is now where we're at. So, yeah. You know, um, if you're tuning in, this is Conversations on Discipleship. I'm your host, Father Adam Streitenberger. With me today is Ann Gradaville. She is one of the focus missionaries at Ohio State University. You know, Ann, it it really kind of strikes me how the Lord, he uses different things to remind us what our primary identity is. And sometimes it is we realize that the other things that we've kind of allowed Mm -hmm. to be our identity, they kind of fail us or yeah. perhaps, you know, fade away. Yeah. Um, and, you know, you saw that in golf. You saw that in kind of your campus leadership stuff and, and in relationships. Mm-hmm. You know, sometimes, um, you know, like a, say a young, you, you know, young people that are in a relationship dating or mm-hmm. something like that, there's a breakup. Yeah. Or, you know, sometimes even people that are very important in our lives and re- relationships in our lives, like death even, you know, can become this opportunity. But I think it's always important to, re- to, to remember that one of the most important lessons we take from whatever this situation might be, and which you did from your the end of really your collegiate golf career and with COVID, it's the lesson that our primary identity is a son or daughter of the father. Yes, exactly. Yeah, it was the perfect storm that led me to that realization that that has to be the center, and I can hold other identities that come from that identity, but those other identities will never fulfill me in the way that the identity as a daughter will. So it was, yeah, a realization that struck me deeply and is part of the reason that mission is so exciting because I get to do that with women every day and teach them that as well. So Now, you know, I've spent hours, uh, maybe hours, it might be an <laughs> exaggeration, interviewing focus mm-hmm. missionaries for you know, various things. Yeah. Um, one of the, uh, a question which I've never asked them, which I want to ask you. Is, <laughs> so, um, you know, you were kind of discipled. Yes, you know, I was. Mm-hmm. And then at some point, the person who discipled you said, hey, would you like to run a Bible study? Did that happen to you? Know, like while you were a student, you ran yeah, Bible studies? Yeah, I was, I was actually running Bible studies before Focus came and I started being discipled. Um, but I was... Yeah, pushed to lead more transformative Bible studies mm-hmm. once I was in discipleship and they were centered on the right things and it was flowing from a relationship with the Lord rather than just a desire to have something on my resume. So I think I was running Bible studies for the right reasons. So but what's, I mean, so you pr- if you probably aren't the one, I'm going to have to find a focused missionary to ask this question because I, I wonder what it feels like yeah. when like you've been discipled, but then you're kind of like, hey, we need to kick you off on mission. Yeah, well, I kind of felt that way a little bit in that I was discipled and had all these plans to go to graduate school after college and things, and then 
my missionaries were like, hey, we need to kick you to be a focus missionary. Yeah. And I really did not have a desire to do it, but was affirmed over and over and over. And yeah, that led to a process of discernment. So I had a little bit of that experience of being pushed a little bit by my missionaries yeah. to do the Lord's work, but yeah. And I, obviously they're not like hardcore salesmen or anything no. like that where you have to do this. It was, yeah, it was a process of opening me up to letting the Lord decide yeah. for me rather than just choosing for myself that what I was going to do, that had always kind of been like, well, I just make decisions and I'll look around and make sure the Lord's still with me, but mm -hmm. I'm never going to let him do it. Um, and yeah, becoming a missionary was the first time that I actually invited the Lord into my decision rather than just making it and making sure it was okay. So, yeah. Uh, what, what are you, um, your, you know, like how long are you committed to as a focused missionary? We're committed to at least two years. And then every year after that, we can discern whether or not we want to stay. So I have teammates who are going on five years, but I'll be here at least two years. <laughs> yeah. Do you, and, and you guys self fund too, don't you? Or yes. well, not self fund, but you like fundraise. Yes, we do. Yep. Yep. So everything that I have is by gift of other people supporting me. So. And then, and how do, you know, like if there are listeners who would want to support a focused missionary, do you know yeah, we can maybe give you the link to put in like the show notes or something, but there is a link on the Focus website. You can find the Ohio State page and find all of us missionaries and reach out to us over email, text, or yeah, you can support us online as well. So. And there's kind of five and a half missionaries. <laughs> yes. <laughs> there's one who's part-time that we may not have mm -hmm. much longer. He's graduating. Yes. He graduates in December, so we hope to keep him, but we don't know if he'll yeah. get to stay or not. So. so. Well, thank you so much for joining us, Anne. Yeah, thanks for having me. Um, and you've been listening to Conversations on Discipleship. I'm your host, Father Adam Streitenberger. With me today has been Anne Gradaville. She's a focus missionary at OSU. And until next time, peace and all good. Welcome to Conversations on Discipleship. I'm your host, Father Adam Streitenberger. With me today again is Anne Gradaville. She is one of our uh, beloved focus missionaries at Ohio State University. Welcome, Anne. Thanks for having me. Um, Anne is also from Iowa. I am, um, yes. but from Des Moines, not from the corn. Yes, field. I'm from the city. <laughs> is it Des Moines or it's is it Des Moines? Des Moines. Yeah. Okay. Only the locals the know that one. Yeah. yeah. Okay. <laughs> Good. Um, let's start with a prayer in the name of the Father, Son, Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Lord, we ask that you bless us, um, bless our time together, bless um, all of our listeners in their day this day, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. In the name of the Father, Amen. Son, Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. So, Anne, uh, when last we spoke, you kind of you told us your story, how you came yeah. to know the Lord, and you were um, and are maybe a golfer. I am, yes. <laughs> um, and you went to Northern Iowa. I did. Yeah. Were you, were you scholarshiped or was that? I was scholarshiped, okay. yes. <laughs> um, so what I wanted to do is to talk to you about golf mm -hmm. and the Lord and the yeah. connections between the sport of golf mm -hmm. and um, and our and our yeah. relationship with the Lord. Yeah. And maybe what lessons. So first, how did you get into golf? Um, yeah, it was kind of a family mm. affair. I didn't really enjoy it growing up, but I was the youngest of two kids and my brother and parents loved it. So I was kind of drug along. I was like, well, you're not going to stay home by yourself. You're going to do this. Um, and then, yeah, it was just a family thing. We often did on Sundays on like a day of rest. We'd go as a family and play. And eventually I realized I was kind of good at it and maybe I could be pretty good at it. <laughs> so it just led to a process of, well, maybe I should try a little harder. <laughs> Now, you have a brother, Jack. I do. Is he a golfer, too? He is as well. Yep. But is he I'm as hoping. good as you? or He's actually better than I is am. Is he? Mm -hmm. Did he play at the college level, too? Or? He decided not to, but okay. he had some opportunities. Excellent. Mm -hmm. So um, you played through high school. Yep. And then you um, went to Northern Iowa yes. um, scholarship. Now, you mentioned um, in our last conversation that there was an injury your senior year. Or yeah, it was actually midway through my junior year, yeah. right before COVID. So, yeah. Do you still golf now? or I do for fun, yeah. I'm learning to play for fun and not to play, you know, to achieve something specific, yeah. which has been a transition. <laughs> but I still, I still enjoy it. I play a lot less frequently than I did. But I'll go out with my teammates and do it for fun. So. Great. 
So um, I want to, so the, you know, the main theme of this whole conversation is golf and the Lord. Yeah. So what have you learned about your relationship with the Lord from your experience with golf? Mm -hmm. That's a great question. I think one thing that golf specifically as a sport has allowed me to do once I was coming to know the Lord was that it's a really slow sport (laughs) and there's a lot of time. Um, And so like we always walked, so it takes at least, you know, three to five hours. And within that, actually only a small fraction of that time, I'm actually like performing. So I, something I loved about golf and like relationship with the Lord was I had the freedom to, yeah, get to know the Lord better while engaging my sport. It wasn't so high intensity that, yeah, oftentimes I could like be praying throughout my round. But something specific about golf that I think ties really well into the spiritual life is, yeah, just like getting down to the fundamentals and practicing those small things. Um, For example, in college, we actually never hit full full shots during practice. Our entire three hours of practice was chipping and putting, which when I first got to college was like, (laughs) what, we're going to do this for three hours? Um, But that was the most important part because you get the the margin of golfers expertise is actually in the small things in putting and chipping and that's where things can add up quickly um and so yeah same in our spiritual lives it's getting down to the fundamentals of yeah the prayer prayer and the sacraments and those sorts of things that help us to attain things like mission um and so yeah something in golf like those small things were what led me to actually be a good golfer by practicing those small things every single day for several hours and same in our spiritual lives like I we have to be praying and going to mass and doing those things before we can you know do these big grand things for the Lord we have to know him that's a that's a really important point because I think um you know the mass as you said and and our daily prayer to really focus and concentrate even though those things seem to be a small part you know we're talking maybe you know, um, eight hours yeah. of yeah. our whole week. Mm-hmm. Um, if we do those well, the rest of the week, um, yes. you know, is key. And, you know, part of that is um, practicing it, like being yes. faithful to it yes. every day, but then also being attentive to it. Mm-hmm. And clearly, you know, I mean, that's the thing I'm always impressed with, like professional golfers, you know, the ones that train people yeah. at the um, – golf clubs and everything in the golf, you know, courses is the attentiveness to their swing Mm -hmm. and how they know, like that sort of muscle memory and their attentiveness to what they're using, even to like the smallest little muscles in their back. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, And you've no doubt developed that as a golfer, at least to some extent. Yeah. Yeah. It's like the small things add up to make a big difference. And just getting down to the basics. And like you were saying, like consistency is a huge thing in golf. You know, that was a big thing I learned when I got hurt was I got hurt, had a long surgery and recovery and tried to come back and play. Um, And I learned that the consistency not being there for about (laughs) nine months to a year, I was a drastically different player than when I began. And same with our spiritual lives. When we lose that consistency in prayer and the sacraments, um, yes, we can come back, but it, it takes the consistency to make the progress. You're listening to Conversations on Discipleship. I'm your host, Anne, or, um, Father Adam Streitenberger. With me is Anne Gradaville. She's a focus missionary, and we're talking about golf and our Lord. Um, sort of a, an interesting little topic. Now, I will add that um, even though there is a connection between golf and the Lord, Golfing on Sunday mornings is not a substitute for mass. <laughs> no, so unless nope. someone is yeah. is thinking about that. It was a Sunday afternoon activity yeah. in our family. <laughs> yeah. So go later. Get yeah. your ma- get mass in first. Um, you know that the that attentiveness to small things too also mm-hmm. reminds me of Saint Therese mm-hmm. and the little way to mm-hmm. do you know small things with great love. Yeah. Um, you know these these small little parts of your game. Mm-hmm. To do those with great attention and um, it's, it also it makes the game. Yeah, that's yeah. In college, that was something that in golf was transformed for me. Was like, yeah, the wind and the temperature of where we're at, and 
the incline and how much room there is in front of the green, behind the green, all of these things are things that I had to take into every single shot I hit. So before I'd hit the shot, there'd be at least a 30 to minute long routine of assessing all those things to know what shot to hit. And yeah, same in our spiritual lives. We have to assess our environment, you know? Okay, what are we, are we placing ourselves in the right environment that is going to help us to pray? Are we going to mass every day? Are we placing ourselves in the environments and with the people, the community that will help us to grow? Are we letting ourselves be, you know, led by other people? Same in golf. I was, you know, I had to learn to be led by my coach. Am I letting myself be led by the Lord and led by those around me who have community and um, skills that I personally don't have yet. So there's just so many connections. <laughs> you know, I also like what you said um, very early on about um, first walking golf. Um, mm-hmm. So you would kind of say carts are for wimps. That... I grew up a walker, so yeah. I'm, I'm hold fast to walking. But, you know, if you're going for speed, carts are helpful. But walking provides an experience, I and, think. And, you know, and you, as you said, you can pray during that time. Yes. Not just for the success of your next shot mm-hmm. or that you find the ball, <laughs> but that, you know, like it, yeah. it becomes an opportunity really to walk with the Lord. Yeah, it does. Yeah, and it's, you have so many hours out there. And like I was saying, it's a small part of the day that you're actually doing the sport, you know. The, the walking is actually what takes the time or you're waiting on your competitors to hit. So, yeah, it provided an opportunity to walk with the Lord. And I'd be lying if I said I didn't ever say a prayer of like, okay, Lord, let me find my ball. <laughs> um, but I think it transformed from those, yeah, small moments of prayer to a more intimate prayer life with the Lord while playing. So, And, you know, I think that that in itself also points to our relationship with the Lord is, mm-hmm. you know, we walk with the Lord through this life. And there are those moments of challenges Mm -hmm. where we have to be attentive to our environment and everything that's going on and swing. You know, Mm -hmm. they might be points of discernment, you know, where we have to discern, we have to make a decision, we have to cut a relationship, we have to Mm -hmm. sacrifice something for the Lord. But most of the time, our life is just that walking with him. Yeah, yeah, and it's... There's so many days on the golf course where you just get into a groove and you kind of forget what you're doing. And I think the same can occur in our spiritual lives when you get into a groove of prayer or going to mass. Like you forget that you've spent an hour with the Lord and that just becomes a opportunity to grow with him. And you forget that you're like doing these things because you just know him. And it's exciting to spend time with him rather than a chore or something you're supposed to be doing. So, yeah. What... um. A couple, you know, as we kind of wrap up, mm-hmm. is what um, is or was your favorite part of golf? I think my favorite part is just that there's always something to get better at. You know, you can't ever reach a point of perfection in the sport. <laughs> you know, you hit 70 to 80 times in a day. You have 70 to 80 shots on a good day, and there's always going to be a couple bad ones, but you always have an opportunity to begin again. And I think like we're talking with connections to the spiritual life, the same occurs. There's going to be days where we don't do exactly what we desire to do in our spiritual lives, but the Lord gives us an opportunity to begin again another day. And so that was something that also, like, golf taught me a lot of, yeah, there's not going to be perfection all the time, but we have the opportunity to begin again. So, Excellent. Um, well, thank you so much for joining us. Um, This has been Conversations on Discipleship. I'm your host, Father Adam Streitenberger. With me today has been Ann Gradeville. She is one of our focus missionaries at OSU. Keep um, her and our team in your prayers. Um, And until next time, peace and all good. 